if you're thinking whether this video will have something that will help you, uh, even if this is your first build or you are more experienced, I'm pretty sure I have some good tips that will help different types of people. Uh, see this video as my ultimate do as I say, not as I do, uh, learn from my mistakes type of thing, because for years I've idealized building a water-cooled computer ever since I was 12 and I built my first computer I saw people water cooling theirs and always thought that that would be just the pinnacle of PC building and after spending the past four to five years with water-cooled computers changing different hardware different water cooling gear I think I now have some knowledge that I would like to share with more people so that you don't make the same mistakes I did because some of them were quite quite quite, quite bad uh, quite bad the number one tip is the secrets to a clean looking water cooled build are angular fittings and good planning i mean if you're building your first computer or even your second water cooled one you probably are under the impression that the only way you're going to be able to make a very clean looking computer are if you go with ptg tubing and you do very good parallel and everything very symmetrical in the bends department but but the truth is uh those builds are only possible because they use a very large amount of angular fittings be that 90 degrees 45 or even rotary fittings and a huge amount sometimes of extenders so that you can make the fittings come out slightly off their ports maybe on the radiator maybe on one of the blocks that's the only way those builds will look extremely extremely clean and parallel. Those alone will usually cost you from 5 to 20 euros each fitting, so if you're anything like me, you probably will at this point consider doing it with just a couple of 90 and 45 degree fittings and making more bends. But trust me, particularly if this is your first or your second or your third build, you probably do not have the practice to nail all those imaginary bends in your head and the reason those YouTube clean builds have so many extra fittings is because even if you nail all the bends, it's extremely easy to just miss the parallel lines by just a couple of millimeters and in the end it just won't look as clean. But if this didn't scare you and money isn't really a major concern to you, do proper planning. I mean, if you actually have to, just draw your loop on a piece of paper and make sure you account for every single fitting that you're gonna need. Maybe buy a couple of extras if you can, because when you're actually building the computer and you have your main rig just with its guts out and you're trying to make those bends work, it's very easy to just misplan and not have enough 90 degree fittings and you, you're left with one choice. You're either gonna compromise and make a not so good bend and you'll be forever reminded every time you look at the computer of your incompetent self i've done that it's it's not great or you're gonna wait to buy more fittings so that they arrive in the mail you're gonna pay more shipping and in the end you're just gonna be left without a computer for for a week and that's not good either number two if you got discouraged by the number one tip and you do not want hard tubing great you are on the right track for a smooth simple build just choose 10 to 16 millimeters or 3 8 inch to 5 8 inch soft tubing in my opinion this is the perfect size for the most people you can buy either transparent tubing like the EK DuraClear or EK ZMT matte black tubing. I guess tip number 2.1 can be if you're going with soft tubing, maybe go with something frosted or even better, go with matte black, for example, like I did last time. Uh, those will result in much longer periods of time without any change to the look of the build. If you go with soft rubber tubing, they will definitely discolor. Even six months with clear fluid will result in them being murky, slightly brownish, whitish, and that doesn't look too good. If you really, really, really want to go with very transparent tubing, just accept you're gonna have to to go with hard tubing either that being ptg or acrylic or even glass any of the other things uh, but if you want rubber and soft tubing just go with something frosted trust me you will thank me later tip number three is if after tip number two you're thinking Maybe, maybe I'll go with hardline tubing, it doesn't seem so bad, at least it will look very clean, just trust me, buy 
proper tools. And with tools, I mean, you will at least need a heat gun that can stand on its own. You do not want to buy one that you're gonna have to be holding every time. You will also need a good silicon insert that is the exact size of the inner tubing. Too small and the tube will warp on the outside and look terrible and too big and you're not going to be able to insert it and sometimes it might even go in but be almost impossible to come out after a 90 degree bend. Most of the times with the silicon insert you get something to cut the tube so you can also use that. I have done so in the past and used that terrible saw that came with it and it was a nightmare. So instead buy something to properly cut the tube like these pliers or even better a rotary blade. They are not too expensive and they make perfect cuts every time and even slightly round the edges of the tubing when cutting. If you go with pliers instead get some fine sandpaper to bevel the edge of the tubing uh, otherwise you will destroy the o-rings of your fittings in no time. You also probably want something to help judge the bends. You can measure it on a piece of paper and draw a couple of 45 and 90 degree bends and just bend the tube over the paper or you can heat it up, get some molds and stick the tube in there and let it cool out. I guess tip number 3.1 is uh, repeat after me. I will not get my hardline build done in 24 hours. Okay, good. Let's move on. Tip number four is more radiators equals more better. Uh, that phrase is true, but, but not in every situation. Uh, take my last build, for example. I recently went from an RTX 2080 Ti that used around 250 watts in game to an RTX 3090 that peaks at around 340 watts under similar load. I also went from having three 360mm radiators to just having two and my GPU temperatures are lower than before. Why you might ask? Well, my previous setup had both the bottom and back radiators pushing heat into the case with a top exhaust so the air inside the case was already very saturated when it reached the exhaust. So I removed the side radiator and placed the three 120mm fans as intakes there and then the thick EKPE 360mm radiator at the bottom of the case in a push configuration. And with the top of the case being a slim radiator with push-pull configuration with the remaining fans. So I still used the exact same amount of fan as I had before, I just removed one radiator from the side of the case. I would have preferred to have the push-pull fans in the thicker radiator, but that simply didn't fit, not at the top and not at the bottom of the case, but I'm still very, very happy with the performance. So if you're buying radiators, consider the airflow of the case if you plan to populate every intake of it with a radiator. You also don't need three 360mm radiators for just a CPU and a GPU, not even two 360s to be honest. I do it because I can run the fans at a lower speed and still get great performance. I guess bonus tip number 4.1 can be thicker radiators are better but longer radiators will help you much more. Uh, take my build for example. If you compare an EKPE, just a normal radiator, to a slim version, the difference is only a couple of degrees. And if you go much thicker than a normal radiator, you'll have to think about fans much more because the air will have to travel much further inside the radiator, either to be pushed into the case or out of the case. So you have to be much more mindful of that. Thicker is better, but longer is much uh, better. I don't know where I'm taking this. I guess tip number five is even if you're sick with RGB like uh, I clearly am not, RGB fans are a terrible way to waste your money. Instead, buy better fans that are probably going to be cheaper than the RGB ones, give you better performance with lower noise and just buy some RGB strips and get your RGB flavored that way. You'll save money, the computer will perform better, and probably I think it will look better as well because uh, I was never really a big fan of the rings around the, the fan blades. But um, 
yeah, uh, those were all the tips I have to share with you. If you haven't checked out my previous video where I shared my build for 2021, the entire PC, everything that went into it, a lot of people didn't catch it. Maybe you're still in time. So links all the way up there and in the description. Uh, but you're here, but, but it's nothing to do with computers, water cooling tips, tricks, nothing. It really is nothing to do with that. You're just here uh, to see Gatsby do some random stuff at the end in his uh, special internet time called feline action. Uh, all right, I'll see what he's up to. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something and you're sticking around. And um, yeah, bye.